In today's demonstration, I'm going to show you how you can trigger a Power Automate Cloud Flow when a new channel is created in Microsoft Teams. So this particular request came in via my YouTube channel and uh, I've looked into it and here comes the demonstration. So the example we're going to do today is when the channel is created, we're going to create a folder structure in that new channel and then we're going to send a message to the team to let them know that it's ready for them to get started. So without further ado, let's jump into my demonstration. So here we are in Microsoft Teams and I'm actually just going to go ahead straight away and create my new project channel. So into the new create a channel, we're going to have project A, B, C, D, E, F, and we're going to add that. And then behind the scenes, our Power Automate Cloud Flow is going to trigger and it's going to create us that new file structure and tag our team in the posts here. So if I jump across into the files tab, we'll be able to see that at the moment there are no new folders there, but as the flow is triggered, it should begin to put those new folder structure in place and also tag that team. So I'm just going to quickly flick back and forth just to see have we got our new folder structure. So there we go. Our new folder structure has now appeared. And not only do we have this default structure here, we have a nested structure. So if I go into my projects folder, I also have some Q1 to Q4 folders as well. So that's just demonstrating what is potentially possible there. Now, if I jump back onto the post, you'll have seen that uh, I have two messages. One is sent via the default out of the box uh, action that has let everyone know that the new channel's there. But of course, that won't alert the members of the team. So I've also used a graph API endpoint, which you can see has tagged the channel. Now, if I bring up my other browser here, I have my colleague, Dave, that's open. And if we have a quick look at his alert, he's got the activity top left. He has been tagged as a result of the channel being tagged to let him know that we have the new channel. So not only have we managed to create a new folder structure, we've also alerted everyone in that team of this new channel via this mention. And so I do have a video on that. I'll leave a uh, reference to that uh, video in my description. But for now, let's jump into my flow and see how it's put together. So I'm going to start off with quite a simple Power Automate Cloud Flow, and it's based on when an item is created. And you can see here that the list name is called Documents. So if I just uh, remove that and uh, use the drop down for dynamic value values, you'll see here I have a list of SharePoint lists, but I don't have the documents value. So we're actually going to enter a custom value here and type in documents. And how do I know that my documents library is called documents? Well, if I jump onto my SharePoint site and if we go to site contents, we can see here we have my default document library, often referred to as shared documents, but the list name is documents. And that's what allows us to trigger our flow based on this item being created. Now, what I've done here is I have a compose action that just takes the body, and the reason for that will become evident shortly. I'm going to put that into test mode, and uh, we can let that run away in the background. Now, the way that this works is obviously to detect that something has been created in this document library, and that could be a file as well as a folder, but also it could be a folder within a folder, so we could go uh, so many folders deep. And if I was to jump into my new channel here, my channel folder, create a new folder and type in one, two, three, create that will in fact trigger the solution that I'm going to show you. But using both trigger conditions and a condition, I'm going to show you how we can avoid it going any further. So now that I've created that folder structure or that new folder, one, two, three, I'm going to jump back to the run history here, which is now run, when an item is created. And if we look at that compose and look at the raw outputs, there are a couple of things that I want you to pay particular attention to. Um, one is the is folder parameter. So we can see here, we have this value here, is folder currently set to true. 
So that's one of the parameters that we're going to check in our final solution. If it's not a folder, obviously it'll be equal to false. Um, it could be a document that someone's created. The other thing that we want to pay attention to is the path. So the path here is based on shared documents, which is our default document library, and then the folder that the new folder has been created in. So I created the folder 123 in the folder project ABCDEF. So again, we're going to use this path value as part of the trigger condition because basically anything that's created in the default document library at the root level, which is a channel, will only consist of the following path, shared documents forward slash. That's it, won't go any further. So any paths beyond that we know are not channels because channels are created at the root of that document library. So if I now jump onto my main flow that I've built, um, I'm gonna have a look through the build of it and then we can go and have a look at the history. So as I've already demonstrated, I'm using the when an item is created, and so we have the site and then the document library, which is called documents. And then if we want to have a look quickly at the settings here, this is where I've set up my trigger conditions. So my trigger conditions consist of two conditions, and I'm using the and expression here. So the first one is that the is folder, which is the one we looked at in the first flow, is equal to true so we know that the that this is a brand new folder that's been created and then our second expression is looking at the body path and checking to make sure that the path is shared documents so those are the two things that i've just described or demonstrated via this very simple flow we're checking to make sure the is folder is equal to true and we're also checking to make sure that the path is equal to the root which is shared documents forward slash and no further. So using that trigger, trigger condition, we know that this flow will only trigger if that condition is met. Now, as I demonstrated in, the, uh, in, this, in this flow here, if we create folders at different levels, or even create files at different levels, uh, the flow could potentially trigger. So it's not necessarily an issue for as a folder, because we've done the is folder true, um, but the full path potentially someone could go ahead and create a new folder at that root level, just like the new channel does. So how do we overcome that? Well, this is where I'm using the list channels action. So here I'm gonna list all the channels that have been created on my particular group. And then we're gonna use the filter array action where we're gonna take the channel list and we're gonna to check to see does the channel name from within this channel list equal the name of the new folder um, that's sent as a result of this trigger. So if we have a look again, I'll just hover over here, you can see it's equal to the body and then in, in the curly brackets name, we can jump across the run history here and we can see that the name, in this case is equal to 123, which is the new folder that was created. We are going to be therefore filtering this list of channels based on the channel name equaling that name. So 123, do we have a channel called 123? Well, I'm pretty confident we don't. So what will happen next is we have a condition that checks the length of that filter array to be greater than zero. So basically, if we have a match, we know that we'll have one and, and the length will therefore be one. But if we don't have a match, which is the scenario that I demonstrated previously, where the name is one, two, three, that filter array will return no values and therefore the length will be greater than, or won't be greater than zero, and will branch down the right-hand side and appropriately terminate. If the length is greater than zero, we'll go down the left branch, which is yes. And the first thing that I've done is just to use the post message in a chat or channel and post that, that message, welcome to your new channel. Now I have an expression here and it's based on first for the body filter and the ID. Now, so what does that mean? I probably didn't <laughs> describe that very well. So we have our uh, the body of our filter array action from above and we want to get the ID back, which is the channel ID. Now, because this is an array, it potentially contains multiple uh, objects 
we're wanting to just return the first. We're pretty confident that there'll only ever be one, but if you were gonna try and drop that ID into the channel here, you would end up in apply to each loop. So this is just knowing how to use expressions in order to return that first, and in this case, only ID that's part of the channel ID. Then I have a compose action, which I've used for an array of folder paths. So using the square brackets, we have the open square and the closed square at the end here. And then simply in um, double quotes, we have the paths. And you can see here, I have the nested paths as well. So projects Q1, 2, 3, 4, and then these other folders here that I want created, all separated by commas. So we have an array and we actually use this array in the next action, which is our apply to each. So we simply provide the output of the array of folder paths array from above and then we can create folders so the folders again are based on the same site address and the same list or library so we're going for the documents and then the folder path is based on the name now again if we want to have a quick look back here the name is one two three so if we're creating a new channel that will be the channel name and then the current item so basically the channel name forward slash and then this expression here item open close brackets which is the current item of this loop so we'll end up with the channel name forward slash projects forward slash q1 and then in the next loop the channel name forward slash projects forward slash q2 and so on all the way through this array as this loops and so the other thing that i've done just for speed i've enabled concurrency and that just means that all these folders will be created in parallel rather than in series. And then finally, I have this graph API call. So I'm using the group ID, which is a parameter of the list channels action. So you'll see the expression loaded up there. And so all that's doing is it is looking up the ID from this group that I provided in this action. I'm then using, again, the expression from earlier where I get the first channel ID from the filter array, and that then allows me to construct this endpoint. And uh, I do have a video on how this works, and like I mentioned earlier, I'll put a link to that in the description. And then within the body, I simply provide my message and who I want to tag, so I'm using the name of the channel throughout, and then again, you'll see this familiar expression which is, again, the channel ID. Um, and so I won't go into that in any more detail, but uh, like I mentioned, you can jump onto that other video, or in fact, I've got a blog post as well explaining how this all works. So if we jump back into the history, we can have a look at how this comes together. So we have when an item is created, and then we list the channels. So we have a whole host of channels being listed, then we have our filter array, which of course is checking does project A, B, C, D, E, F exist? So we've gone from our, our array of three channels and our filter result is the one channel. Our condition is met, so the length is obviously equal to one, so it's greater than zero. We go down the left branch, we post a message in the channel, we have our array of folders, they apply to each loop, which is run eight times, and here we can see the path look. So we have the folder, which is the name of the channel forward slash the path that's taken from that array. And if I can jump on a few here, we'll go to six. So you can see here, we've got the work and progress folder. And then finally, we have my send an HTTP request, which is simply notifying everyone by tagging them and therefore sending them that alert in Teams. So that's how the solution comes together. That's how it runs. And uh, if I just jump back here and we'll have a quick look at this other example, which I ran earlier. Now we have listing the channels as before, filtering the array, and you'll see here that the array has returned none. So the length is therefore equal to zero. And if we go into my condition, we can see that the condition has not been met and therefore we branch right. 
So that was just an example of how the solution will handle the scenario where a folder is created at that root level because the channel doesn't exist in the list channels. When it goes through the filter array, we have no result and the length is therefore equal to zero and we branch right and we terminate. So that marks the end of the demonstration. Um, the thing to note about this is it does only work on the public channels, not the private channels, because of, of course a private channel actually sets up a brand new SharePoint site and this is specifically looking for a new folder at that root level being created. Um, I did have a quick look to see if there's a way of doing it and I think potentially it can be done um, using a totally different solution because of course we need to trigger when a new site is created. If that's something that interests you, something you'd like me to try and do a video on, then please make sure you comment below and uh, if you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.